The victims of certain acts of negligence are often in no position to speak for themselves. Sometimes we are the only voice they have. I'll be talking about the Nigerian healthcare and asking a question, a problem of quacks or not. It's no news that there has been a massive exodus of healthcare professionals out of the country in recent times. Doctors and nurses are living in their droves on a regular basis in search for greener pastures and with little or no attempt by the government to improve the state of things. The brain drain of the health sector would inevitably worsen. This does not bode well with any of the average Nigerian, as living here is gradually becoming an extreme sport. While the middle class and elites could afford to invest their wealth in medical tourism and get quality treatment abroad, the rest of us become endangered species. Such was the case of Alex, a 27-year-old student of the Federal University of Gombe, who walked with his two legs into a general hospital with the sole aim of visiting a dentist, but was wheeled out on the same day as a corpse. As stories flew across social media, there was the disclaimer by the Nigerian Dental Association that, uh, that the alleged specialist who administered a wrong injection was, wasn't a qualified dental surgeon, and all attempts to bring, the, to bring him to book have till date proven abortive. It was also told that the supposed surgeon was on leave the entire day. What would have seemed to be a harmless toothache escalated into a terrible disaster, and some folks, we call it fate. It is difficult not to notice the deaths that occur daily in the country from preventable causes. There was also the case of a doctor's refusal to treat a patient with severe knife injuries because of a lack of police reports, which of course led to her bleeding to death. In other instances, cases of wrong diagnosis, wrong prescription of drugs, inadequate medical equipment, and the list goes endless. An interaction with a doctor friend on these issues rather sees pertinent questions being raised, all pointing fingers to the Nigerian government, the Nigerian government again. He asked, how do we prevent a man-made catastrophe such as these when Nigerians' annual budget per person is only $6, not for a day or a month, a whole year? Why won't there be incessant industrial actions and preventable mortalities? To put this in perspective, the annual threshold per person in the US is 10,000 US dollars, while our country can only boast of $6 for her citizens. How do we surmount our peculiar challenges as a developing country with so little resources allocated yearly? This only reveals where the priority of the government lies a country with an estimated population of 180 million has only one doctor per 6,000 citizens. How sad. So I'll say, someone definitely needs to take the blame. The question is, is it going to be the quacks and the unethical medical practitioners or the government and its policies who have failed to address the issues and concerns of healthcare professionals and you know, systems in the country? If any significant progress is to be made, all hands must be on deck to ensure that our health sector is given the parity it deserves and spare the untimely death of our loved ones and leave fate completely out of it. Ah, uh, um, you see, Bring this a deep also, sigh. <laughs> yes. yes, seriously, because humans are involved. Yeah. Here, um, I had a debate with a colleague recently saying, and the way we highlight death in Nigeria, say people don't die in other countries. Do but we I said, well, it enough? when people die in other countries, there are steps to ensure that there's no repeat of occurrence. Such, yeah. And then there are steps also to ensure that it is avoidable. But here, we allow people to die like chickens. And so that's the difference. And also, it also connects to the topic raised by Emeka and I mm -hmm. that who is responsible? The people wouldn't want to take responsibility. During the break, we are talking about people not perceiving yeah. their own acts as you know, contributing to this pool. Mm -hmm. And they would rather point accusing fingers at government. Your doctor friend says, oh, it is the government. But he is a doctor, forgetting that even if 
The moment you sign to work there, whatever is given to work, you manage it. Mm -hmm. If these people are brought to book, now they are making excuses. The man was not on duty that day. Yeah. Or the person is not registered. qualified. Yeah. It's not registered. And it ends there. The man will still come back the next day and work there. Mm -hmm. No sanctions. So if there are no sanctions, it will keep repeating itself. Mm -hmm. So at our own individual level, at organizations, Chuka comes here and talks about architecture, criticize, give knocks to his people. How many of us would do that? That's basically mm -hmm. why. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, because um, when I was thinking about what you were saying, the Swiss cheese analogy came to mind, you know, so many holes on so many levels that you can't, because for this thing to happen, you would have had several systems mm -hmm. failing. So you would have had the policy that was there that's yeah. not being enforced. You'd have had the supervisory level of making sure who is on the ground is registered. Yeah. That has failed. You then have, you know, the doctor himself somehow managing to work within a hospital system that's not checking him. That too is a failure of systems. You know, so the, before you get to that point, there will be several systemic failures. So we must be able to hold someone on this. Because I saw the picture of that young man, vibrant looking young man with a future in front of him. I'm sure he never dreamt that a dental appointment will lead to the yeah. termination of his life. So I think there must be something we can do. The, person that, the, the people that jump up in my head are the NDA, the National Dental Association, because they need to be the police on our behalf. So they need to give us... But they're covering up. They yeah. need to go after yeah. you. Know, we're going after them, you know, because yeah. it doesn't it's make quite sense. Sad. Yeah, yeah. It's quite sad. But I, I don't know. You see, Nigeria's problem is quite, uh, almost unique. How did we get from... A situation where we have, well, how did we get to a situation where we have no money and such a lot of people? So, you know, like, we, I was reading that our, Failure you know, to invest GDP, over time. Yeah, GDP. No, it's always like Thailand. that now. It's, it's compared like to that. Thailand. No. They, no, people that don't have money have more people. It's really, yes. you, know, you haven't invested it's, in the people so that they become so productive. You don't expect good medical, you know what I mean? The, the, yeah. The yeah. money is not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. And there are more people in Alimosho. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. poor area yeah. than you have yeah. in Victoria yeah, that's it's true. That's like that. but, but again, if you had over time planned for it and made investments in those people, those people would be more productive. You know, so you essentially Thailand, Thailand has six times a better I, GDP I, I think, well, per capita than us. You know, six for, times. For me, that's shocking. Ultimately, wow. I, I will, I will, I will say that um, it is the responsibility of of government. Yeah. Because we are part of government. There are no doubt about it. We create government. Um, but I think that is the responsibility of government. Government has to rise to the responsibility of saying we will do this in the best interest of us. You know, so call it enlightened best interest. And that is what we require. And I think that's the kind of leadership that's required to make this kind of changes. Well, I keep speaking on behalf of the many unheard voices. However, this is where we get to hear your voice. On when in doubt, they will take all down. Baba Tunde or Debbie Yi says, dear all, I'm really fascinated by this program, very educative and eye-opening. However, I observe that on, on and off, all of the people just talk at the same time. At some other time, the panelists do not allow the other panelists to finish their thought before being interrupted by the other one. Please, we cannot all be talking all together at one time, in, like in a marketplace. Thank you for this, Robert Tunde. We'll certainly take this on board. On human trafficking in Nigeria, Nati Rebe says, no one force anyone into sexual exploitation, but they choose to be in it because it's paying off. Quite unfortunate, though. Thanks, Nati. However, you will find some are tricked into it, like the lady that just returned from Lebanon. On when in doubt again, they take her down. Kunta Kinte says, unfortunately, they don't need to reach the point of doubt before taking these subversive steps. Someone in the corridor might have hatched a plan on how money can be made in the area. So they had to come up with this lame excuse. Take it all down has always been the escape route of government. It is sad we have never had one that ever bothered to think things over before taking decisions that affected the people. I wouldn't mention thinking out of the box because that would be expecting, that would be expecting too much of government. This keg of gunpowder we are all sitting on, I fear gravely because I wonder how much longer. Thank you, Conta Kinte. Now, why does that name sound familiar? Yes, it sounds very familiar, Conta Kinte. The boy from Africa. <laughs> Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up on the previous broadcast, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Kenneth takes on the issue of Kekena Pep and Okadas. One of us had to. The Fenetler. 
Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize.